independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Inflation Nation, as Anthony just whispered. Inflation. How is inflation? It's the economy, student. 6.8% from a year ago. Excluding food and energy, the consumer price index increased 4.9% in line with expectations. Except for the part where when you listen to things like energy, up 33% since a year ago. 58.1%. The cost of fuel. Gas prices jumped 6.1%. Excuse me? Is that really what it is? Three in four Americans, according to a new study, are up at night or having trouble sleeping based on the economy and their finances. That's real. That's real. All the other stuff, all the noise that's out there, for, for the chaos and craziness of reality show TV and the fighting over January 6th still, because Adam Schiff's never going to let that thing go. All of that stuff, all of it, means nothing to the average person. Not right now. Not when you're sitting here in the holiday season and you're seeing people who are taking on more responsibility taking on more work in some cases, watching things go through the roof, not being able to get certain things, seeing energy prices rise, wondering how they're going to keep food on the table. And that's what people care about. That's at the end of the day. That's, that, that's it. A lot of this other stuff, eh, it's stuff. Right? You know, politics is politics. They play the game. It's become reality show TV. But at the end of the day, after we've we have we have come through the other side of, of, of this this in, in many cases, you know, Omicron and, and Alpha and Delta and all the other stuff that's out there. At the end of the day, while that was a huge pain in the ass and it was a wake up call for a lot of people of wow, you know, I mean take better care of myself, health and life is fragile, all those things. This is what's keeping people up. This right here. It's the economy stupid. And inflation is continuing to rise. I don't see that changing anytime soon. For some people, there are just, you know, wacky issues you know, that they only care about. Why? Those are people whose lives, eh, they're not really worried. Right? They got money in the bank. They're usually in a position where they have very little responsibility. They had responsibility maybe at one time, or they have zero responsibility now. Meaning they're younger and they got no responsibility. Or they're older and they had some responsibility one time, but now they're set. So all these other things matter to them. All these other things matter. But keeping food on the table, and, and I'm telling you guys, I I got a bunch of, you know, I got two stepdaughters, a daughter, a son, wife, a household. We got a business, another business. I see it. I understand it. Putting food on the table. My little brother and my son were out here a couple weeks ago, and they're like nonstop eaters. All the time. I mean, you know, it's that that's all they do. And partially because they burn so much energy. Totally understandable. Right? Like that's. But to tell me that food's only up a little bit. We know it's more than that. Because you got to add it on. You're not compounding. Yes, this thing may cost 5% more than it did last year. But when you add, you're not buying a singular thing at the grocery store. You're buying many things. And those all add up. You see this today, just remember, what are people really talking about? They're talking about things like this. Gas prices. I've had more conversations in the last three months outside of will Trump win last year. I have never had this conversation or any conversation as much as I've had 
this singular conversation, which is the gas prices. They ever coming down? What's going on? Hmm. Not even coronavirus. You know, they would go, what's the late? This is just singularly focused gas price. Gas price. Every day somebody's talking, man, I saw, I drove by a, you know, store the other day and, uh, you know, where I normally go and across the street they have this, you know, A&P and this quick trip, this ARCA, whatever it is. And it was, it was, you know, 462. It was 390. It matters. It does. You know it. I know it because you feel it like I do. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from all of you. All that being said, there's still this other thing out there that's dangling, and it's called coronavirus. Omicron. Ooh, Omicron. So what are we going to do with Omicron? Nothing, because... It's basically mild. Even Dr. Walensky came out yesterday and said, yeah, it seems to be pretty mild. Spoke to a couple of people over the last couple of days who are in the healthcare world, the likes of Will Humble and Dr. Carmona and stuff like that. And they said some of these people, Alex Stone, ABC News, it was reporters talking about one of the people that caught Omicron. <laughs> he just wasn't vaccinated and he didn't even know he had it. I guess somebody else had gotten sick, so they tested everybody. He had no idea. Was that mild? And and she's doctor. I mean, uh, CDC director Walensky is like, yeah, it seems like it's a pretty pretty mild thing. But those mandates. Well, look, I think what most people around the country are most worried about is the fact that they're seeing COVID cases going up. I can guarantee you, Jen Psaki, they're not worried about COVID cases going up because they think they're going to die. They're not worried about that. They're worried about the reaction of the government how it plays into their world and their economy. But they're not sleeping, you know, with one eye open thinking, oh, is this, uh, uh, is this, this, this coronavirus coming to get... They've gotten the opportunity to have the vaccines and the boosters. They're not worried about that. And they're wondering what we're doing about it here in Washington, which is a good question. And so the reason the president supports these requirements, which is either to get vaccinated or to get tested once a week, is because he wants to give people reassurance that if they're going back to work, if they're sending their kids to school, if they're going shopping in a retail outlet, they're going to Target or wherever they may be, that they're going to be safe. Yeah, that's what people want. People want safety. It's like with crime, right? Like they don't, they don't want to go to a smash and grab. Oh my God, what do I wear to a smash and grab? How dangerous is Omicron? Well, it's dangerous to your pocketbook and our taxes. Israel's already working on fourth vaccination shots. Um, when we see real world data, will determine if the Omicron is well covered by the third dose and for how long. And uh, at a certain point, I think we will need the fourth dose. I have said that multiple times. Um, with Omicron, we need to wait and see because we have very little information. We may need it faster. Ah, may need it faster. <laughs> I've talked to our accountants and they say maybe faster. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah, but they're saying it's very mild, almost like a cold. Wouldn't that be good if a certain amount of people, uh, along with shots and boosters, also this group of people out there that aren't going to get any of those things, and I know you'd like to have them as customers, uh, at least this would be a position where they may catch something that isn't really going to do any damage to them, and in not doing damage to them, have a certain amount of herd immunity built into this. Again, never reaching that herd immunity that we've always dreamed of with polio and stuff like that, because this is a different kind of virus. The virus is able to jump from animal to human and vice versa, so you're never going to get rid of that. Wouldn't this be good? Uh, the fifth shot. <laughs> Okay. Never ending. Never, never ending. Some people are like, I haven't even got my second shot. Yeah, you need five more. That's the schedule we want you on. Another five to seven more. If you could do that, be stoop. Super, super, super. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. I have no more. I'm sad. Sad to say. I ran out. My Oma Steaks. All my tasty nice is gone. Because I ate it all. OmaSteaks.com. Enter Chad in the search bar, and you're going to get the opportunity to give the perfect gift package for under $100. You're going to get 24 entrees, 
bacon wrap fillets, chicken breast sides, desserts. There was no issues with, with in, in, you know, like, oh, shortages, shipping delays, none of that stuff. If you're looking for the perfect holiday gift, not only a gift, maybe you want to gift yourself that. Maybe you say, you know what, I'm going to get myself this so I can barbecue. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, I'm going to get this for my mom, my dad, my family loves to barbecue. It is the perfect gift at a price that's amazing with the best, absolutely most incredibly flavored meat you're going to have, and that's Omaha Steaks. It's truly, truly incredible. I ate through everything. The kids ate the caramel uh, apple tartlets like that. The scalloped potatoes is what you get, but then you get all of the other stuff, including throwing in eight free burgers on top of the burgers you have. And the jumbo franks are incredible, but those fillets, whoo, ha <laughs> Nelly. So how do you get it? It's the perfect gift. And you're going to achieve greatness this holiday by giving a gift like this. You go to omahasteaks.com, enter chat into the search bar, and away you go. You will not be disappointed. Right now, the perfect gift package, under $100, and eight free five-ounce Omaha Steak Burgers. Absolutely delicious. Go to omahasteaks.com, keyword chat, omahasteaks.com, keyword chat. Chad Benson Show. States? Uh, no. Deep doo-doo? Yeah. The Chad Benson Show. Oh, Julian Assange. A British appeals court has overturned a lower court ruling, which means WikiLeaks whistleblower Julian Assange is again facing the prospect of being forced to the U.S. On the heels of this latest decision, yet another appeal by the Assange team will be launched. U.S. prosecutors have indicted the 50-year-old Australian on 17 espionage charges over the publication of thousands of embarrassing and damaging leaked military and diplomatic documents. Yep. Could he be coming over here soon? Remember that when they arrested him? When in the boat, was it the Ecuadorian? <laughs> it's just the whole thing's insane. He lived in the Ecuadorian embassy for, what, like seven years? Just imagine being in a house for like seven years, an embassy. People are doing work. So imagine living at your work for seven years. You're just there. Because if you go outside, somebody's going to capture you. So just imagine that. So while people are doing work, while people are, 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 are out and about inside of the office, coming and going on a daily basis, while all of that is happening, you're inside. You're passing them in the hallways. You got your bathrobe on, right? You're on your way to the, to take a shower, and they're 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 doing consulate business. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Be interesting to see if they eventually do get him here. Not quite sure what that looks like. What are they going to do with him? Right? What are you going to do? Are we really going to throw him away? What does he know? What didn't he release? What's out there, right, that he hasn't released? It's always that. It's like the, the Ghislaine Maxwell case. So what's going on with there? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of weird stuff. We know that. The dude was a creeper, obviously. He liked young girls, absolutely. How much did she know? Uh, pretty much all of it, by the sounds of it. What aren't we being told? And then it was interesting the other day on Twitter, there was a guy who's following the case, right? So he's not commenting, he's throwing stuff out there. He's not giving, like, anything other than the who, what, when, how, and why, and they blocked him on Twitter. If that's not weird, you know, it's like, you're not, it, this is a case, this is news. He's not in, it, it, it's, it's crazy. And that makes people go, huh? Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. People behaving badly in the air continues. Got another one, and this one got ugly. The flight crew kept on coming back and forth to ask him to wear a mask. Sam Jamal was sitting behind the passenger and says the conflict started about an hour into the flight. It was over time. It, it became physical. A lot of it was mostly one end verbal on his end. Delta saying in a statement they applaud the quick action and professionalism of the crew and federal air marshals on Delta Flight 324. We apologize to our customers for the inconvenience. Yeah, you know what I would do with people at this point in time? 
if you're going to divert my flight, make me late for things, for my family, make our life even more miserable wearing these damn masks longer and all of these things. If you're going to do that, I would just tell everybody, here's the deal. We could divert the flight or we can let everybody take a pop at this guy. (laughs) I vote for two. We're all in the same position. Nobody wants to wear a damn mask for God knows how long. Nobody wants to be in that position any more than you do. Just shut up and deal with it. Because now what you've done is you've made our lives even more miserable. Even if I can agree with you. It's like I always say, if you block traffic because you have some sort of of protest and you want everybody to hear your voice and you decide the best action is to to cause a traffic block when I got places to be and I don't want to be in the car for eight damn hours, even if I agree with you. At that point in time, I'm going to do everything in my power to fight your cause against you. Sorry. Sorry. It's the same thing here. You don't think, you think everybody wants to wear a mask, and that's how this started. And the flight crew kept on coming back and forth to ask him to wear a mask. Yeah, and it's getting uglier and uglier. This year alone, there have been over 5,500 reports of unruly passengers. That is the highest number the FAA has seen since they started keeping track in the mid-90s. Yeah, because, and it's not, yeah, normally it's people are liquored up and stupid. People are pissed off. They don't want to wear the mask. It's all about the mask. We get it. Nobody wants to wear it. Stop making our lives miserable. It's already bad enough that we got to play this freaking Stupid ass charade of of kabuki theater when it comes to hygiene. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. We shall talk some juicy smule. Will he go to prison? Won't he go to prison? Convicted of five or six charges. Text the program. Tweet at us. Love hearing from you. Happy Friday, Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Juicy! Juicy Smoulet! What happened? Hey, let's you guys tell me if this is aged well. At Juicy Smoulet is one of the kindest, most gentle human beings I know. I'm praying for his quick recovery. This was an attempted modern-day lynching. No one should have to fear for their life because of their sexuality or color of their skin. We must confront this hate. That was uh, Kamala Harris. (laughs) It's not aged well, ma'am. No, it hasn't. But juicy! What happened? I've been truthful and consistent on every no. single level since day one. That's actor Jussie Smollett in March 2019, less than two months after the former Empire star told Chicago police he was the victim of a racist, homophobic street attack. A Chicago jury late Thursday found Smollett guilty of staging the whole thing for publicity, convicting him on five of six criminal counts of lying to police. Smollett could go to prison for up to three years. Court watchers say he'll likely receive probation. Yeah. Now, do I think he should go to jail? No. I don't think you should go to jail. But the reality is, is what the hell were you thinking? Honestly, you lied. We knew that. It wasn't even close. <laughs> like, it was the worst attempt at whatever it is that you were doing. You wanted sympathy from Fox because apparently you were not getting as much money as you thought you deserved. And you were also potentially being written out of the show. Then this happens on a cold night in Chicago. 
at like two in the morning, you decide without a shirt, you know, just like a t-shirt and stuff. Very cool. You're going to go out and get a Subway sandwich, of which two people who were purportedly white, wearing red hats, ronding around with rope, attacked you specifically. (laughs) I'm buying none of it. Man, but when it first came out, like all the, oh, my God, it's this, that, that, And what do you do? You take a step back and you go, you know what? I, I want to see if there's more to this. I want to see if there's, I want to see if there's more to this story. Because we, we have this, this, this way now where we, we rush to judge. And we never find out the truth, right? And none of that's about the truth. And we rush to judge. And we don't even care what it is. As long as we feel that we're on the right side of whatever judgment needs to be there on the social justice side, that's all that matters. Even if it's an absolute lie. Even if it's an absolute lie. He lied. He lied. That was it. Kim Fox, at the time, the the DA that refused to press charges, because the police knew like five minutes in, I don't think this guy's telling us the truth. Why is he still wearing the noose? That's not even a noose. <laughs> He's got like canceled checks from the Nigerian brothers, those two guys. <laughs> and then they were like, they're accusing, they're accusing the prosecutor of like being homophobic. And he said that the guys were homophobic. It was just, it was a so stupid. And he lied. This jury worked so hard, and for Mr. Smollett to get up in front of them and lie for hours and hours and hours, that really compounded his misconduct. By the way, the jury worked hard. We sat there, and we knew 30 seconds into anything he was saying, he was full of crap. We knew that. You cost uh, the city money. Chicago police officers spent 3,000 hours of time costing the city well over $100,000 for a fake crime that never occurred. And by the way, a fake crime that denigrates what a real hate crime is. Which is absolutely true. Absolutely true. And we hear about these way more than we should. I'm not talking about real hate crimes because you'd like to hear about them never because they wouldn't exist. But the reality is we live in a world where People are awful at times. Not everybody, but a few. We are so many people out there who do certain things to themselves because they're hoping to garner sympathy or how many, at least once or twice a year, there's some professor out there of humanities or whatever who, who, who does something completely stupid. Look at all the things they painted on the wall. And Isn't that your handwriting? Yeah, no. <sighs> Wonder how he's doing. He's holding up very strong. He's committed to clearing his name, and he is 100% confident uh, that he's going to get cleared by our appellate court. (laughs) No. I keep going back to why. Well, I'm not going to speculate why a jury did that, but that sixth count was an event that occurred two weeks after the event. Yeah, so... Five of the six, he was found guilty. One, he wasn't. He faces like three years, but he's not going to prison. Not going. To, I don't think he's a danger to anybody outside of poor acting and stupidity. Oh, my goodness. How are you going to send him to jail right, and not send the dude who lit the tree on fire to jail? Fox lit the tree last night. You know, and there were some hecklers out there. And the, So the guy that they released, he's 49 years old. His dad lives in Hawaii, and his dad's a, oh, he's cuckoo. <laughs> I can't stop him. I don't want people want me to do about him. So apparently, the news media says, oh, we know that dude. We know him. Because last week at the Maxwell trial, he dropped trow in front of all of the female reporters. He pulled his pants down and woo, gave it the old woo. Which the last time I'm checked, producer Phil, is that a sex crime? 
It could definitely Me? be harassment. <laughs> I would think so. Hashtag me too. He caused five hundred thousand dollars in damage. <laughs> and the cops say, "Yeah, we know who that guy is." <laughs> I love his dad's like, "Yeah, I can't stop him. I don't know what you guys want me to do about it. He's nuts." <laughs> Oh, goodness me. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. I do. So they did it. Starbucks has done it. Kind of not really. A few places are trying it. Mesa out here, I think a vote is in the next coming weeks. But in Buffalo, New York, they've done it. Employees at a Buffalo Starbucks voting to become the first Starbucks shop in the nation to unionize. Workers also voting at two other Buffalo Starbucks, citing frustration over understaffing and insufficient training. Starbucks at first tried to block the vote, then tried and failed to get all stores to vote yes or no. Just before one store picked the union, Starbucks said its workers would make an average $17 an hour by next summer and that they've invested a billion in improving wages and training for their workers. It's never enough, kids. It's never, ever, 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 ever enough. That's it. It's just never enough. What do you want them to do about staffing? Nobody wants to work there. Or long hours. What do you want? Yesterday, this uh, uh, organic like juice shop in California apologized because they, they put out a help wanted sign. You know, and the help wanted sign said, We'd, if you are the one, you know, like the one. The one who doesn't cry, the one who doesn't whine, the one who doesn't have excuses, the one who has no BS, the, then we would love to talk to you about being the one. And they pulled the sign down because some people are offended. I'm like, those are the people you go, you know what? You can't work here. You can't. I look at the unions now as they look at Starbucks and places like this that uh, this is the new, like, this is mom and dad for them now. The union is. So fight for 15. Now at 17, it's not enough. Here in Arizona, the store that they're going to, that they're going to vote on, they're offering, uh, it's at 15 now, it'll be 17 to 20, uh, I think at the turn of the year, and they're potentially up to $23 an hour, plus they'll pay for your entire four-year college education if you go to ASU, and the person's all, it's still not enough. It's never enough. We have earned our seat, and we have proven that we are Starbucks. We are the heart of this company, and we want to see it beat along with its missions and values. Yeah, so what is it exactly you want? Just out of curiosity, what is it? This is Georgetown, a uni, uh, union labor historian, Lane Windham. People are fed up with the long hours, the low wages, and so the Starbucks workers they are part of this sort of moment of a worker rights revival that's happening in this country. No, they're not. What do you think is going to happen? Honestly, people will stop either going there if it gets too expensive or Starbucks will start shuttering stores. That's, that's what happens because we're still a consumer based society. We still want some cheap, no matter what anybody says. And the funny thing is the young people are excited about this because, again, it's very much like, hey, let's get some other people in here to fight our fights for us. Oh, Chad, that's not very nice. That's, but they're also – think about this. They're going in and they're, and they're unionizing. Okay, so you go in and you unionize. But the young people don't stick around long. They don't. They're not staying there for – you know, back in the day when we had very little laws and it was absolutely – tilted in favor of the major corporations you were there mostly for your life that's what you were fighting for you cared about it you wanted to be there you wanted to share in parts of it that's what you were looking for this i find to be uh you know nuts the kinds of jobs that young people want they're saying you know what maybe it's a good job but i think it could be better and I'm going to exercise my right to have a union and to have a voice on the job. Yeah, but what is it that you want? Because I always hear it's never enough. It's never, never, never enough. Having a union 
at their workplace can be really good for the company because it will help them retain these young people. It will help them have a voice on the job. And so I think Starbucks should change its tune and embrace the union and sit down and negotiate a contract. So you go negotiate a contract, right? So you go, you do that. But it's all, remember, too, these are all publicly traded companies. Many, 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 many moons ago, when unions were prevalent in this country, very few, if any, companies were publicly traded. It's much different now. It's much different. There's a lot that goes into boardrooms and and people getting, you know, saying, hey, you know what? We got to cut the fat, so let's do it. But they have con- now they'll blow it out. They move to, they'll move it overseas. And, and here's the other thing I know. We're also a nation of we like them cheap. So if you overdo it and prices do rise, which is I'm always amazed. People are like, I can't believe that people aren't coming here and they're thinking about firing a bunch of people or thinking about closing the shop. I mean, you know, coffee's already tripled in price <laughs> because of uh, you know all the stuff we have. And people aren't shopping here anymore, but still. And here's some. I don't drink coffee, so I have tea, and I make it myself. And I'm not unionizing. Three two three five three twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter tweet at us. Rough greens makes any pet food better. Uh, my dogs might unionize if I don't give them their rough greens. I sprinkle it right on top of their dog's food. It's got uh, vitamins, minerals, probiotics, mega three six nine, all this incredible stuff. When you put it on there, it is amazing because it's just like a little seasoning that goes on there. They love it, but what it does is it brings their food to life. And that has been huge, especially for my older dog. He's got more energy. His hips don't hurt. He's in a better position than he's been in since I've had him, and I love that. Two years into this, I would not do anything else. And the other thing is it's cut down big time. We haven't taken him to the vet in over two years. He's that much better. We used to take him to the vet all the time because we're so worried about him. Try Rough Greens before you buy it. RUFFgreens.com slash Chad. Roughgreens.com slash Chad. When you go there, they're going to send you a bag for free. You just cover the cost of shipping, or you can call 833-MY-DOG-77, 833-MY-DOG-77. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. Being antisocial sucks. Hang with Chad's friends on Facebook, The Chad Benson Show. And if you just need some alone time, head on over to Twitter at Chad Benson Show. Either way, we can't wait to meet the real you. Man. I thought last night, we had dinner, the wife and the kids, and then I thought, oh, this game's halftime, it's 29 nothing. I predicted the Vikings were going to win, I thought, that's ah, 29 nothing. I get home, it's 29-7, but Pittsburgh had the ball because they just had an interception, I'm like, oh, what's well, the next play, 29-14, I'm like, oh, it's still a lot of time. What a game. What an absolute crazy game. 36-28. Last play of the game. Big Ben hits the big tight end. Right across the center in the end zone. Two Minnesota Vikings converge. Boing! Ball pops out. Friar Muth can't hold on to it. It finishes that way. Absolutely fantastic. I picked the Vikings to win. They did everything in their power to lose, but still they managed to win let's get the rest of the picks out of the way i'm 164 for the year based on that last night not bad here we go sets saints jets hate to do this but i'm gonna go with the jets on this one i don't know why but i am falcons panthers see the panthers getting over on the falcons Ugh. it's tough on that one i think i'm gonna go with the falcons right there i just think the falcons are as you know they're not great but man i tell you what the panthers are a hot mess right now Texans, Seahawks. Seahawks get that one. Raiders, Chiefs. Chiefs win that one. Ravens, Browns. I went Browns. Cowboys, Washington. How about them Cowboys? They're losing this weekend. Washington gets a dub at home to pull within a game of the Cowboys. 
Jags, Titans, Titans win that in a walk away. There will not be win number two for the Lions this weekend in Denver. Broncos get over that. Chargers and the Giants. Chargers got to win. Bengals, 49ers. I'm going with the Bengals. Bills, Bucks, arguably the game of the day. Buccaneers at home. I've got to win. Packers, Bears, please. We know who's going to win that game. Packers. Monday night game. Big one. Huge. Cards, Rams. Cards, arguably the best team in the NFL right now. It's hard to debate that. If you're going by numbers, Packers did beat them, but Cards are at home, but they've struggled at home. They laid, they absolutely crushed the Rams when they played in L.A., and I think they win again. Cards beat the Rams Monday night. There it is. Jets, Falcons, Seahawks, Chiefs, Broncos, Washington Titans. Oh, my goodness me. Chargers, Bengals, Bucks, Packers. You got it all, kids. Enjoy. It's going to be fun. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. I do. See that Pat McAfee? We made fun of him when he left the NFL, just signed a big contract. He was a punter. Go, I'm going to go to Barstool Sports and be a blogger. People laughed at him. $120 million contract he signed for four years with FanDuel, doubling anything he ever made in just one year. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Prices, kids. The economy's stupid. Things are up. Consumer price index. Things are more expensive. Don't have to be a genius. Don't have to be an expert in finances. Don't even really have to understand what's going on to get that. And they've jumped year over year. Huge. Inflation is now at its highest level since 1982. And we're feeling it in food prices, in energy prices, and in shelter prices. Caleb Silver at Investopedia said prices for everything from food to gas to furniture are up. Americans didn't spend money last year, and the higher costs are related to what the Federal Reserve has called supply and demand imbalances. Now that demand is back, now that we have these... Supply chain issues, because there's so much demand, we're seeing these price spikes. Silver said prices could begin to stabilize in the first half of next year after growing 6.8% in the last 12 months. Yeah. One of the things I always talk about when people ask me, what's, like, everybody's got their own metrics on on how to see where we're headed economically. It, it, it's, it's, some people look at, they're looking at charts and looking at historics and stuff. Other people are looking around and they're taking stock of what's going on in the world and throwing some you know charts and stuff in there. But to me, it's always been about one thing. It's not only that prices are high, but folks are feeling it too. And, and you can tell through the decline in consumer sentiment and consumer confidence that this is really starting to weigh in on U.S. consumers and ultimately the economy. That right there. Consumer confidence. All the other stuff means very little. If you believe that things are well, you're not worried about paying your bills tomorrow. You're not worried about whether or not your job's going to be here. You're not worried about any of the things that, you know, that, that, that people are worried about now. Three in four Americans right now, according to a new study, are, are having some sort of issue sleeping at night. And a lot of it they're, they're basing it off is, is they're saying they're worried about finances. It's that confidence. Because if you have confidence and belief that things are okay, you're more apt to spend money. If you're more apt to spend money, you're more apt to see other people spend money. In doing so, you see what? Growth. You see a steady growth. Right now, as things start to peter out, things start to slow down, and I, it's people's confidence in the economy is, is, is wearing. Uh, on them on a daily basis. You can see it. Last year, for about three months, I was asked one question over and over. It was the, it was the, 
the most I'd ever been asked one singular question in all the times I've ever done this. Will Trump win? This year, it may have topped that, and it's, will gas prices ever go down? Ooh. And then you couple in, not even during the, the coronavirus of, like, will it ever go away or any of these things, but, and by the way, gas prices eventually will go down, right? The economy will eventually be good. Uh, all of those things are true. It's like, th- th- those things, you don't have to be a genius also to realize that, right? It's so eventually, you know, it's going to come down and we'll stabilize and we'll get through it and then boom, it'll start to take off again and we'll have a boom time again. But the one thing that's playing into consumer confidence now isn't just the rising price of energy and everything else. You throw in this. If we continue to have economic restrictions popping up every few months due to a new variant, we're going to have this push and pull in the economy that's going to keep prices elevated because there's uncertainty. Bam. Markets like certainty. Being being not only in this business but following the financial markets for a ton of my life and being in the marketplace and having a, you know, a brokerage firm when I was younger and and doing those things that that I did with trading and stuff. One thing I took away for so much is is the certainty that the marketplace wants. It can it can handle a slowdown here and there. Those things are built in. It can handle a blip here and a blip there because like everything else, it's like it, it, to them it is like a plane ride, knowing that you're going to have some bumps along the way, knowing kind of what those bumps are, and they're really not a big deal. Everything goes through. In fact, in many cases, it's actually good because sometimes you get in the wind behind you and you're pushing. What they don't want is the check engine light coming off, the the engine going down, a fire in the airplane. It's the same thing. What the marketplace builds into an understanding of some stuff's overpriced and you're going to have a slowdown in certain things and there might be a supply and demand issue over here. All of those things are normal. It's things like the variant that flips people out. And it's not, you know, the average person starts to panic. We saw this with Omicron because the media comes on and then they they, they have this giant, insane, over-the-top bunch of crap like this is the biggest thing since who knows what and whoa, and, and, and they come out and the media plays a huge part in this without ever knowing what it was about. And then the reactions at times of other cities, and like he said there, the push-pull, the push-pull of, you know, what we're going to restrict, we're not going to restrict, we, we, we might shut down, we might close some schools, that stuff, that's the uncertainty. That's not stability. That scares the marketplace, that scares consumers, and that's when you get a slowdown. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. Then you've got the other side of what's going on, which is you have a world away from us, a country in Russia on the doorsteps of another country, the Ukraine. You've got a president that, look, I don't think he's a bad person, but do I think that he is the uh, brightest bulb? Not at this moment in time. Do I think that that he's trying to be a lot of things to a lot of different people and he's trying to appease everybody? Yes. And there's uncertainty there that should Russia decide that they want to move on the Ukraine. And the Ukraine, by the way, Zelensky is saying at some point in time he feels that they're going to do it. He is said that this is going to be long and drawn out. They're going to turn into an ugly, nasty mess. The questions about NATO are being asked, well, what's their role in this? President Biden said he hoped by tomorrow to announce meetings with at least four of our major NATO allies and Russia to discuss the future of Russia's concerns relative to NATO. Nothing has been set in stone, but that would really be a win for Putin. Yeah, because what some people are saying is he's trying to negotiate with Putin annexing some of the territory in the Ukraine and around Crimea and stuff and ceding that to him. How much of that is true? I don't know. 
But another thing in the marketplace in a world where, where you could see energy prices shoot through the roof, and then there could be potential other ramifications down the road when it comes to the open marketplace, as well as situations over here with China, because you know who China is going to back in a situation like this, and that those tensions are, are definitely going to rise. And Putin right now has somewhat of an upper hand as far as he's concerned, because he doesn't want NATO on his doorstep. That's the way he's saying it. I don't want you guys to put missiles here and defense systems right here on my doorstep. So he saber rattles and he does all of those things. We threaten sanctions, but then we, we there, you know, what kind of sanctions are we really threatening? I don't know. That's a very fair question because it feels like sometimes they're like, hey, we're going to do everything. Would you do this? No, nah, we're not doing that. What about this? No, nah, we're not going to do that. What about this? Eh, probably not that. So what is it? This is when you say, look, between us, I'm never doing that unless he did something so uh, uh, heinous that the world's like, we got to act. But we can't take it off the table. You have a rhetorical escalation with Putin accusing Ukraine of genocide, saying that the Russian-speaking population in the East is being persecuted. But there are more worrying signs tonight. I just got off the phone with a U.S. official who said Russia is still building up those troops despite that virtual meeting with Biden and Putin. Yeah, why wouldn't he? Looking for an excuse to go in. And it's not about people being persecuted. I don't think for a second, a hot second, that he gives two rats ass about Russian people in the Ukraine supposedly being persecuted. I don't think he cares about any of that stuff. I think we all know that. People like that don't care. They love the fact that they can go in there and use something as an excuse, but this isn't about those people. Don't let him fool you. Again, another situation with brings instability in a world right now where we're looking for more stability. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program, rake on best earbuds around right now. Huge deals. So you could go out and get crappy earbuds. I mean, you, you, yeah, you can do that if you want, or you can get Raycons. You can spend two, three, four hundred dollars on a set of earbuds that you think, oh, these things are cool, or you can get Raycons, which I know are cool and are about half to a quarter of the price. The best earbuds around. No wires, no stems, right? You got tons of different modes. You got the bass mode, the pure mode, the balance mode. Three new modes right there just on the everyday earbuds. But across all of Raycon's amazing website with their incredible, incredible array of products, you will find nothing but the best. They fit better than everybody else's. They sound better than anybody else's. You get a 45-day happiness and no nah, guarantee. So if you don't like me, send them back in 45 days. Right now, for my listeners, that's you guys out there. They're doing something awesome, right? So you can pick from all the stylish colors. You got five with it every day, and, and you can go pick up all these incredible things. Oh, man, this is great. The perfect gift, the best sound quality, tons of battery life, tons of talk time across their entire website, 15% off. Don't worry about scrambling for last-minute shipping. Take advantage of this. This is what I want you to do. Buyraycon.com. Use code HOLIDAY and save 15% on any of your products. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Code HOLIDAY. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Site-wide. Use code HOLIDAY. Save 15%. Chad Benson Show. No snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Ah, so much is trending. Here's still the perfect example of over... Trump still gets, like, this is a headline for people because he's still such a a rent-free liver in so many minds. He's living inside of people, brains, and they know that he'll... 
Former President Donald Trump accuses one-time close ally Benjamin Netanyahu of disloyalty for congratulating Joe Biden. Like, did he really? I mean, why wouldn't you? You're still, you don't stop being a world leader because your pal isn't the world leader anymore. (laughs) So stupid. Former NFL receiver Demarius Thomas, second leading receiver in Bronco history, has died at age 33. Nobody knows what happened. I guess they did a well check, found that he had passed away. They're saying it's some sort of medical episode. Horrible situation there. 33 years young. He just retired this past year, decided to hang it up. You're like, wow. Like 33. Goodness me. Head on over to Google. Demarius Thomas. Steelers. Juicy. Juicy Smoulet. Two million searches yesterday for Juicy. They're all Juicy Smoulet guilty verdict, latest in polarizing case. What's polarizing about it? You committed a crime against yourself and lied about it. What's polarizing? You're an idiot. That alone should put you behind bars for a while. Josh Duger. Of 29,000 kids and counting, is found guilty of child pornography. Faces, I think, up to 40 years in prison. Scumbag. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, he's going away for a long time. Good. Good riddance. Brian Wilson. I mean, Brian Williams signed off from NBC after 28 years. Pat McAfee trending. It was a huge deal. Let's say something about this guy. Talk about the cojones, right? So here's a guy. If you don't know who he is, he was a former punter in the NFL. He had just signed a contract. I think his contract guaranteed him like, you know, 8, 10, 11 million bucks, right? So he's making a couple million bucks a year as a punter. Pretty good work if you can get it. But he was loud. He was funny. And he, he was friends with the guys at Barstool Sports, saw what they were doing over there. And he left to start a blog, slash vlog, and everybody made fun of him. Right? Everybody made fun of him. But then he became a big hit. And then everybody wanted a piece of him. And somebody got a piece of him big time yesterday and fend you. We just got paid an absurd amount of money. And what that money says is they don't own our company at all. FanDuel is still our exclusive sportsbook partner. But they just want us to lock in the fact that we will continue to do this show how we want to do it, maybe in a bigger way in the FanDuel Igloo, which we will be moving into in about four or five months for at least three years. Yep, it's a it's a three it's a four year contract, hundred twenty million dollars. I think in his career, I think he made like eleven million. So he more than doubled. In just one year from this. Took him a few years to get here. But uh, that's huge. Good for him. I love it. That's a massive deal. $120 million. $30 million a year. They say he's edgy, relatable personalities, proven to be effective, referring to the betters of FanDuel. That's why FanDuel has been so keen to back up the Brinks truck to retain him. Good for him. 323-538-2423. You know what I love about it, too? If you ever watch him do his stuff, most of the time he's wearing, like, a T-shirt with his, you know, the cutoff arms. He's got no arms on it, and he looks like he just came from the gym. <laughs> hey, let me do something here. Oh, 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show. It's your Twitter, kids. Check out the gram as well, because we got the gram. We do. So that's the kind of people we are. We can roll with the gram every once in a while. We're okay. We don't have a problem with it. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show.
independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Uh, We've got an issue. We've got an issue on aisle United States of America. It is called uh, uh, a jump in inflation. Consumer prices rising 6.8% in November. That's the highest since 1982, and we're feeling it in food prices and energy prices. Absolutely. Energy prices up massively, 33%. Food prices up tremendously as well. Gasoline over 53% jump. It's crazy. I mean, you feel it. You know you feel it. Everybody does. I was reading today that no matter what bracket you're in when it comes to the the economy we're not talking about the ultra wealthy we're just talking about whether you make a hundred thousand dollars plus whether you make you know fifty thousand you fee you're feeling this right now you're dealing with it it's nuts and you know i don't i how's he spin this today and they're going to jen saki apparently she's going to blame you know meat producers and she'll blame saudi arabia and she'll blame a few other things some of the things Saudi Arabia, OPEC. Okay, there's something to that. More consuming that we've done. But not a ton. And there's a way to make some of this go away. And it's a call he doesn't want to make. We've talked about that. MBS wants a phone call from him. That's it. They have reiterated over and over again. He has the phone number and he knows what to do. He won't make the call. Well, we shouldn't want him to make that call understandable we're not quite at the point where we have magic fairy dust so we can admit no co2 but i would just like to tell you this until that happens we're going to have to survive on the fossil fuel side of the world and people are feeling it all incomes are being hit super price index all adults 41 percent saying it's having a major impact 48 percent say minor impact 11% say nothing. Under 50,000 a year, 50% major impact, 38% minor impact, 12% none. Over 50,000, 33% major, minor 56% impact on their lives. And 11% none. People are staying up at night, frustrated, stressed, and worried. And they're looking here, the holiday season's here, and they're trying to figure out what they're going to do and how they're going to pay for stuff and their family and their travel. And they're trying to spend some money and do some stuff, and they're budgeting and doing things differently than they think they were going to have to do. And they're still dealing with this damn Omicron variant, which is pissing them off because this thing wasn't known two weeks ago. Then all of a sudden Thanksgiving comes and, oh, God, and then people freak out because you've you've, you've thrown something out there and you've named it and you've put it on this pedestal only to find out that you should never have done that. But alas, here we are. And one of the things I keep talking about, and I go over it again and again and again and again, is when you look to see how the economy is going, you look for a few things. But one of them is the confidence in the economy. And right now, that is waning. If people don't believe it's good, they're usually right in their mind. And because of that, people start to pull back. And when they start to pull back, then things slow down. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. I'm going to say this. People have always asked me, why, why, why don't you coach sports? You played soccer and stuff. And have you ever coached? And I did coach. I coached for a while. I coached club for a while after afterwards. And you know, I never liked coaching. I coached my little brother's special needs because it was fun and the parents had fun. I even... I just can't. I can't, like, even when I go watch my my son's game, it's the parents are crazy, and I just, ugh, and I want to be around that. The, 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 you know, it's like it's an in-house league. It's their first, you know, year or two of playing hockey. It's just let them be kids, right? You know, and it's the same thing. When I coached soccer, it's, it, was, it was awful. But it's a competitive world now, and it's big business. And parents are nuts. Case in point. Latira Shanti Hunt. She's in trouble. She's a mom. What'd she do? 
A youth basketball game after an accidental bump on the court. The 15 year old victim is then knocked to the floor with a sucker punch, disoriented after that, and did suffer a concussion. The girl who threw that punch and her mother, who encouraged her daughter, yelling from the stands, You better hit her for that, were immediately ejected from the game and from the league. That mom, 44 year old Latira Shanti Hunt, now facing two misdemeanor counts. Yeah. And if you've not seen it, it was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. By the way, her dad is Chicago Bulls former player, Corey Benjamin, who apologized. He goes, as a father, I'm shocked and disappointed at my daughter's behavior. And this is not a reflection of the values and standards that my family holds. She laid her out, too. It went in close. I mean, she knocked her the out. But what are you doing, Mom? The Orange County District Attorney said when he saw that video, he was outraged, said he was disgusted. And today he did file criminal charges against the mother who encouraged her daughter to hit the other child. The daughter stepped back into that space and just wall up child though too. In my opinion, it would have not happened but for mom's words. Mom's words were the catalyst that caused her daughter to even think about hitting child though too. Yeah. No. What do you, again, but that's why. Parents were nuts. Kids were nuts. Parents would, 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 would scream and yell. Parents would, you know, would say horrible things. Parents were just awful. And I'm like, I don't want to deal with this. I don't. I, I want nothing to do with this stuff. And the kids, too, by the way, because so many of these kids are raised in such a way where they were given carte blanche to kind of do any of the things that they wanted to do. And mom and dad basically told them that they're right about everything. And mom and dad told them that th th they could do no wrong. And that if, if they didn't get in the game, it's not because it's only because coach didn't like you or what or coach didn't like mom or dad or any of those things. And I'm just like, oh, God, I'm no part of that. Zero part of that. And you see some of these parents that get into it and see some of these parents who are screaming and yelling at their kids. She's, and I'm like thinking to myself, calm down. Calm down. Take a deep breath. It's a game. The kids are having fun. They're learning. And you know what you do a lot of times is you turn kids off of the game. They don't want to play sports anymore. It's embarrassing. It's, 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 they're stressed out. They're not having fun. They're doing something. In many cases, they do, they, they, they're terrified to do because they don't want to let mom or dad down. They don't want to let them down. And the, the, the fact that you would tell your child to strike another child. Is is crazy. Like I love my my son is a beast on the ice, and it's not because he's a beast; it's because he can't stop. He get better. Like the other day when I went to see, he smashed a kid. He didn't mean to. He couldn't stop. He smashed, and then Jack's trying to pick him up. <laughs> I'm like, stop. You know the rest not like half the time when they call penalties, they don't even know. Nobody knows who did what, <laughs> right? It's, it's it's their first year. They're learning. And, but it's, again, it's, it's, it's a fun first year league. They're taking it serious. They're getting better, but you've got dads out there already screaming. You've got moms out there already, you know, screaming, like, and not cheering and stuff, but like, you know, it's about their kid and you can already hear it. And I'm like, oh God, that stuff is, I, and, and also makes me not want to go to the games to see my kid play. Because it's just so awful. And the pressure you put on children. Because you're trying to do something. What, to live through? Oh, so-and-so you know, -so is mean. Well, you know what? You go out and you play and, you know, and, and, and it could be a physical game. Then use your physicality. But you don't cheap shot somebody. Did I do that when I played soccer? No. I mean, there's ways to, you know, there's ways to give a little whack here and a little whack there. Never cheap shot somebody. Never, ever, ever.
Never. Sad. Sad, though. And that's, again, it, it takes the fun away. I just, ugh. It just does. I sit there and think to myself, ugh. And you, you told your daughter to punch another girl. To punch another girl in the face and lay her out. And you did. And you did. You're proud of that? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. All right, kids. Calibrate. Calibrate, calibrate, calibrate. We're taking more and more thought about our health. And I think sometimes we, we get frustrated because things aren't working the way we thought. And we're trying stuff. Nothing seems to work. And sometimes that's zero to do with willpower and all to do with the fact that there's just a certain amount of biology that you're not going to overcome without help. That's where Calibrate comes in. Different, comprehensive, doctor-guided metabolic reset promotes sustainable results through lifestyle changes. And it works in several different ways. First of all, you're going to get doctor-prescribed, FDA-approved medication paired with lifestyle changes to improve metabolic health. So... Your, your body sits at a certain level, and it's comfortable there. When you make shifts down, it tries to hold on to certain things. It wants to go back to where it's comfortable. What you need to do, essentially, is to reset it so it's comfortable at a much lower weight, and that's what this does. And it's integrated program, one-on-one, -on -one, video coaching, in-app tracking, community members like you and everybody else join it, medical care, including video doctor visit. On average, 14% is what Calibrate's earliest members have lost as far as their body weight goes. That's massive. And it's easy to fit inside of a busy, busy schedule. It's so easy. Right now, I want you to do something. Because your weight doesn't reflect your willpower. Get back in control with Calibrate. It's not a diet. It's a simple, easy lifestyle change that actually is proven to work scientifically. Get $50 off. The one-year metabolic reset when you use promo code chat at joincalibrate.com. That's $50 off when you use code chat at joincalibrate.com. Chad Benson Show. Running with scissors sounds great compared to this. Say woo! At some point in time, you would think lawyers would tell somebody like Alec Baldwin, dude, shut up. Jesse Smollett, shut up. <laughs> right? Travis Scott. But instead, he decided, I'm going to sit down with Charlemagne the God. Talk about what went down. Hip-hop superstar Travis Scott in a nearly hour-long interview with radio host Charlemagne the God about his performance last month at his Astroworld Festival in Houston, denying his history of encouraging concert goers to rage played a role. My heart wasn't there to be the villain, you know. He didn't know exactly what had happened until after the show. I'm sure you experienced any remorse, but was there any hesitation to have this conversation because of the litigation you may be facing? Um... It's not about that. So it's not about that. Okay. It's not about that. What is it? First of all, again, why are you speaking? And I know it, it, you want to, you feel that something happened and that, that you aren't the villain and you want the world to know that, but you have to take a step back and say, the world that you're dealing with now potentially is criminal. I don't know about that. Definitely is financial. And the things that you say here, and the, that can get you in trouble potentially. Now, let's talk about that night, man. When, when, did, when did you find out things got as bad as they did? Now, that's, that's the question everybody wants to know. Yeah, it wasn't really until like minutes until like the press conference until I figured out exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, um, even after the show, you know, you're just kind of hearing, hearing things. Um, but you don't know, I didn't know the exact details until... So you didn't know people that actually passed away nah, and stuff? Nah. Wow. Until minutes before, you know, mm -hmm. which is... Until minutes before. What do you mean minutes before? Until minutes, what? What are, you, what are you saying there? You didn't know? You had no idea that chaos and craziness was going. Is it possible? I think it's possible-ish, but probably you're stretching on that one. 
you know, and at the thing is like, you know, people pass out, you know, people, you know, things happen at concerts, but something like that. Yeah, people said they uh, collectively heard folks screaming help every time you stop the song to get your attention. Did you hear any of those screams? Nah, man. And you know, it's so crazy. You know, anytime you can hear something like that, you want to stop the show. You want to make sure, you know, fans get the proper attention they need, you know. And I, anytime I could see anything like that, I did, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I stopped like a couple times to just make sure everybody was okay. I just didn't, I just didn't hear that. You know, mm -hmm. I got music, I got my in-ears, but I just didn't, I just didn't hear that, you know. But you just said you did stop the show at some point in time. So if I'm an attorney right now and I'm cross-examining you, whether it's a civil trial, or criminal trial, whatever, you said that you did stop it, but then you didn't hear anything. Then I'm also going to ask this of your staff. Did you guys know anything? Of course they did. How could you not know? Now, did they know the severity of it? No, probably not. But did they know that there was real issues where people were having real problems? And it wasn't just because somebody took too much of something. It wasn't any of that. You know, raging. Raging has been a part of the culture, you know, of your shows. You know, you didn't on this night, but in the past, you've encouraged, I guess, the kind of energy that could have led to something like this happening. Mm -hmm. Do you think that contributed to the energy of this night? Yeah, no, nah, I think, you know, it's something I've been working on, you know, for a while of just creating these experiences and trying to show like the experiences happening in a safe environment. Mm -hmm. You know, us as artists, we trust, you know, professionals to make sure that, you know, things happen and people leave, you know, safely. And this night was just like a regular show, mm -hmm. you know, it felt like to me. Felt like to you. Maybe. And so... Again, I, I go back to why are, Why do these people do that? Why are you going on with Charlemagne the God? Because you want to get your truth out. You feel that you're being victimized and you're villainized over this, that, that you know, things you've said in the past are now being held against you when it comes to previous concert when nothing happened, even though you may not have been in that situation. You've done that in the past. And then you come on here and say, well, I didn't hear anything, but I did hear some stuff. And we did sh stop the show, but then I couldn't hear anything. That's what prosecutors and people are looking at. That's what people who are going to and have been filing, char not charges, but lawsuits, are saying, listen to what he's saying. Why? Same thing with uh, Alec Baldwin. Although he's such a douche. <laughs> Is there a prison for that? 323-538-2423. Ah, At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. By the way, I say that. A lot of people in Hollywood say that. A lot of people, by the way, will not work with Alec Baldwin. They're like, yeah, he's got some talent, but at some point, it's just he's 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 awful to work with. A lot of people like that. They're awful to work with. Man, just somebody's like, don't go on TV and talk. 323-538-2423. <laughs> At Chad Benson Show. It's your Twitter, your Instagram, and all the other goodies out there. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Inflation nation is what we're sitting at right now. Saw one headline. How do you spin this one, Joe? It's going to be tough to spin this one if you guys don't know. As inflation is up just a smidge. And by a smidge, I mean a whole hell of a lot. Massive jump in inflation. The kind we haven't seen since I was a wee lad. 
Prices have not gone up this much in a 12-month period since 1982. Consumers are paying more for food, energy, cars, and clothing, but they're still spending. And they continue to spend, even though prices remain high. How long they continue to do that is the big question. Caleb Silver at Investopedia said inflation may be near its peak. We may see a turnaround in prices or at least a slowdown in the increase going into the next quarter. Inflation burdens low-income Americans with higher costs for necessities. It also erodes the higher wages many workers have received in a tight labor market. Yeah. Inflation is ugly and nasty. Now, what would it look like if we weren't in the holiday season? That's a fair question, because I think right now the holiday season is masking some of this nastiness at this moment in time. At this moment in time, I feel like it's masking some of this, but this is what Caleb said as well, and and I want you guys to listen to this, because to me, the biggest indicator that we could be in trouble isn't past You know, when people go and look and they look at historic numbers and they look at, you know, the correlation between this and this in the the financial world. And they're, you know, it it isn't historics. It isn't any of those things. It it, it isn't everything that's going on outside of the market. All of those things play into it, but it plays into one big thing for me. It's not only that prices are high, but folks are feeling it, too. And, And you can tell through the decline in consumer sentiment and consumer confidence that this is really starting to weigh in on U.S. consumers and ultimately the economy. It weighs on them. They don't believe, potentially, that things are good. Consumer confidence has always been the most important thing for me when it comes to how we as an economic world function. If you believe that things are good, you're more apt to spend money, right? You're more apt to go out there if you know your job's not going anywhere, that you're solidified in your career, that you're making more than enough money, you're not worried about the prices getting away from you, you you can save a little bit, you're not wanting for anything. If that is happening and you have confidence and belief or belief that that's right around the corner because then you're willing to go out and spend money willing to spend money means people believe that it's okay and by spending money it expands the economy but by expanding the economy we move things forward one of the other things you have to calculate it is what else is going on outside that has nothing to do with the economic side as a whole but what it can do to the economy if we continue to have economic restrictions popping up every few months due to a new variant we're going to have this push and pull in the economy that's going to keep prices elevated because there's uncertainty yeah and uncertainty is a marketplace that is dangerous It is a marketplace that is absolutely dangerous. The market likes to know, right? They do. It's like an airplane or a ship going across the ocean. They map out the weather. They map out the places that might give you some trouble. They map out the areas in the ocean where they know, hey, look, on this day, uh, you know, we need to steer clear of here. And, you know, same thing with the flight. Hey, we're going to, you know, we know when we get this thing, we're going to we're gonna face some bumpiness. Uh, we might want to climb 5,000 feet. We, but there's a certain amount of certainty in what's going on, and they understand that. That stuff's built into that kind of flight. What they don't want is the rogue wave. What they don't want is giant air pockets, wind shear, things that they can't see. They want predictability. And right now we don't have it. We don't have it, and it's going to be very interesting in the coming weeks to see how the holiday season plays itself out. We had the first time ever, I think we had a, we spent less uh, on Black Friday than we ever had before, but we crushed it on Cyber Monday. And now the real test is between now, because you have two. You know, realistically, you have two weekends left till Christmas. I mean, two weeks from today, it is Christmas Eve. 
So we've got two weeks left until Christmas. Two shopping weekends. What does that look like? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Other big news today. Not a lot. Quiet time. But one of the things that's going on right now is the abortion issue. It is out there. You know it. I know it. Is what it is. A lot of people are wondering what's going to take place with Mississippi's now that the case has been heard. There was another case today that was heard by the Supreme Court earlier, and they gave a ruling on something. It's a very interesting ruling. In an eight-to-one opinion, the U.S. Supreme Court said abortion providers in Texas may still sue in federal court over SB 8, which bans most abortions after six weeks. The decision limited the defendants to state licensing officials. Texas judges, clerks, and the attorney general are off limits. And while that legal challenge proceeds, the Supreme Court imposed no injunction by keeping the law in effect. Justice Sotomayor said in dissent the Supreme Court has betrayed not only the citizens of Texas, but also our constitutional system of government. Yeah. So that's the battle that's going on there. So it's 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 a mixed outcome. They didn't rule, hey, you know what, six weeks is fine. What they said is you guys can continue to sue. You can continue to bring forth lawsuits. But we're not going against it. And it was an eight to one decision. Eight to one. Now what? The case will go back down to the federal district court in Texas, and the federal district court is going to have to decide just what to make of the Supreme Court opinion, basically, you know, permitting this lawsuit to go forward against these state licensing officials. So that's the way they're doing. So they're suing state licensing officials. They're suing. It's it's essentially they're what they're bringing is the ruling today was you have every right to sue, but we're not going to stop it. Right now, we may hear the case and then you can bring a case against this. And so can all the other abortion providers out there. But we're not going to stop it. But you do continue to have the right to sue. The court did narrowly side with the clinics um, who had challenged this law, basically finding that their lawsuit against some defendants, not all of the defendants they had sued, but some of the defendants could proceed. Yeah. So, very interesting. This is a bit, another one of those battles, and I and this is here's a perfect example of of the what we've talked about with Trump, right? And, and the whole thought process with Trump and is is legacy. Normally, you don't think of your legacy until you get to the point where you're past the second midterm. If you're a president that you've been through, and you look and you go, okay, this is it. You know, I, I see the runway, and now. What's on the other side of this runway when it comes to me looking back on this entire journey? What are people going to remember me by? But the the court itself is is that thing. The court itself is that remembrance at this moment in time. Yes, there's going to be chaos and craziness when it comes to January 6th and, and the double impeachment and all of those things. But it's also going to be remembered bad for the Democrats. You lost both. One of them was a grand lie. The other one was an overreach. And you're still pining for a third thing here. And all of those things being said, you're, they're going to be remembered just as much as a debacle as that. But when actual stuff that matters to everyday individuals that has a actual potential real impact in life, which is the Supreme Court. And as we all know, it goes to the Supreme Court. And I'm not I'm in a position right now in my life where if you tell me something in a lower court, I'm like, I don't even care. It means nothing to me until those nine decide that they're going to hear it or they're not going to hear it. I don't care. And until they rule, I don't care. And I know that sounds callous, but that's the way it is. By the way, too, uh, quietly earlier in the week, the you know the Biden administration had put together a uh, like a think tank to go out and study what would happen if we expanded the courts, and they came back and they said, "Yeah, don't do that." <laughs> I'll just summarize it: Nah, don't do that. It's not good for us. I mean, it's worked since what the late 1800s. Doing this now, first of all, 
if you did it today, you decided that's what you wanted to do, and they have every right. There is no rule against it. You, what they said essentially is you're going to get into essentially a pissing contest, and every time a group comes up, they're going to expand the courts and expand the court, and then we have five thousand judges, and that's that that's that's silly, and then it's also going to be seen as bitter, and that's not going to help us if your goal is to try to bring us together. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show's Twitter Car Shield. 24-7 roadside assistance, a rental car for free while your car's in the shop. By the way, the shop is the shop that you choose. The administrators take over everything from there. They get them paid directly, take care of the paperwork, all that stuff. You don't worry about it. You pay a small deductible, and away it goes. It's what's so great about Car Shield. All right, on top of that, in that rental car, you get trip reimbursement, 24-7 roadside assistance. you got to love that. So whether your car is 5,000, 150,000 miles, no matter what it is that you're looking for to protect your car from cover repairs, and one of the things we were just talking about inflation, the prices on cars – particular used cars have skyrocketed through the roof as well as new cars people are worried that if something happens to their car they're not gonna be able to afford a car well this is where car shield comes in protect yourself in the event that something may happen by getting car shield they got a perfect price plan for everybody's budget go to carshield.com slash benson you'll save 10 percent right there over a million drivers have been helped by car shield find out why they're america's number one auto protection company carshield.com slash benson saves you 10 percent a deductible may apply No need to socially distance while listening to your Chad Benson Show podcast. Four out of five experts say so. I'm a scientist. There is no corona. But hurry before they change their mind. You know they will. Chad's podcast found on iTunes, iHeart, Spotify, and wherever you find your favorite COVID-free podcasts. Oh, my gosh. (gasps) I kind of like it. I'm not going to lie. This is the Chad Benson Show. (sighs) The, uh... CEO of Better.com has been forced to take some time off. This is employees revolt. Revolting! Because <laughs> he fired him on Zoom, 900 of them. He's got like 10,000 employees. Now, I'm, I, here's my thing. Apparently, he's pissed and he's angry and he was frustrated. And he probably felt all of those things uh, before because he was saying that they were stealing from him because they were only doing a couple hours of work a day. Uh, you know, so, and they just got a huge influx of cash. And a month earlier, a month earlier, they were called by, I think it was Fortune or Forbes magazine, the unicorn of of the place to put your money, investment, you know, who's this company valued at $7.7 billion. By the way, value means nothing at all they're value you valuing a company based on the potential of future endeavors contracts potentially where they might be going so he said uh that many of his terminated staffers have been working two hour days on average likening them to thieves one current Worker said that members of the sales team were asked to distribute his apology note to clients in an effort to dampen the customer revolt. It was 100% a PR move. No actual apology, said the worker. Okay. I don't. Look, it goes, it goes into this. Was he, are you pissed because everybody called you out? Because I go back to Zillow had to lay off, what, a quarter of their staff. Like a month ago. And I don't see any, well, they did it in a different way. You're not having not, and, but I believe that was 2,500 people. This was 900. You're not having a conversation with every single person. It's just not going to happen. Could it have done better? Yes. And I think is, the, the guiltiness is, is, is that you flailed at delivering this. You wanted to be the person who stood up there and said, you know what's my bad. I screwed up. I jacked the pooch and, and, and I'll take responsibility saying that you guys, you know, that we're having to let you guys go. Uh, 
apparently they had a $750 million cash infusion, which they announced the day before. But for the last month or so, he had been talking about the fact, and he'd been telling everybody in meetings and everything, that we need to we need to lean down. We need to become hungrier, and we need to be leaner. And not always, and this is the way this works. When you're getting that kind of cash infusion, almost a billion dollars, which they'd already gotten, I believe, over a billion dollars in, in several increments during the the uh, the schedule, you know, schedule A funding, B funding, and stuff like that in the financial world, that they're not handing you money with no strings. They're giving you money because they believe that you are a smart investment and that you're going to grow their money. That's why they hand it to you. But they don't go, here's $750 million. I'll see you later. Doesn't work that way. Do I think he's a bad guy? Yeah, by the sounds of it, he's not the nice guy to work for. <laughs> Some people saying he's unhinged. Well, I said the other day, once you, once you promise and threaten to staple your business partner to a wall... And then light him on fire. <laughs> Chances are you've reached that unhinged level. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Juicy Smoulet. The juice will be loose, but doesn't mean he wasn't guilty. We'll discuss that. Unionization. Speaking of workers at Starbucks. Get ready for your $14 Starbucks that's normally 8 bucks. Talk about that straight ahead. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Juicy! Juicy Smoulet! What happened? Hey, let's you guys tell me if this is aged well. At Juicy Smule is one of the kindest, most gentle human beings I know. I'm praying for his quick recovery. This was an attempted modern day lynching. No one should have to fear for their life because of their sexuality or color of their skin. We must confront this hate. That was uh, Kamala Harris. <laughs> It's no aged well, ma'am. No, it hasn't. But juicy. What happened? I've been truthful and consistent on every no. single level since day one. That's actor Jussie Smollett in March 2019, less than two months after the former Empire star told Chicago police he was the victim of a racist, homophobic street attack. A Chicago jury late Thursday found Smollett guilty of staging the whole thing for publicity, convicting him on five of six criminal counts of lying to police. Smollett could go to prison for up to three years. Court watchers say he'll likely receive probation. Yeah. Now, do I think he should go to jail? No. I don't think you should go to jail. But the reality is, is what the hell were you thinking? Honestly, you lied. We knew that. It wasn't even close. <laughs> like, it was the worst attempt at whatever it is that you were doing. You wanted sympathy from Fox because apparently you were not getting as much money as you thought you deserved. And you were also potentially being written out of the show. Then this happens on a cold night in Chicago at like two in the morning. You decide without a shirt, you know, just like a T-shirt and stuff. A very cool night. You're going to go out and get a Subway sandwich of which two people who were purportedly white wearing red hats, rounding around with rope, Attacked you specifically. <laughs> I'm buying none of it, man. But when it first came out, like all the oh my god, it's just that, and 
what do you do? You take a step back and you go, you know what? I, I want to see if there's more to this. I want to see if there's I want to see if there's more to this story. Because we we have this 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 way now where we we rush to judge, and we never find out the truth, right? And none of that's about the truth. And we rush to judge, and we don't even care what it is. It, 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 as long as we feel that we're on the right side of whatever judgment needs to be there on the social justice side, that's all that matters. Even if it's an absolute lie. Even if it's an absolute lie. He lied. He lied. That was it. Kim Fox, at the time, the, the DA that refused to press charges, because the police knew like five minutes in, I don't think this guy's telling us the truth. <laughs> Why is he still wearing the noose? That's not even a noose. <laughs> He's got like canceled checks from the Nigerian brothers, those two guys. <laughs> and then they were like, they're accusing, they're accusing the prosecutor of like, being homophobic and he said that the guys were homophobic it was just it was a so stupid and he lied this jury worked so hard and for mr smollett to get up in front of them and lie for hours and hours and hours that really compounded his misconduct by the way the jury worked hard. We sat there and we knew 30 seconds into anything he was saying, he was full of crap. We knew that. You cost uh, the city money. Chicago police officers spent 3,000 hours of time costing the city well over $100,000 for a fake crime that never occurred. And by the way, a fake crime that denigrates what a real hate crime is. Which is absolutely true. Absolutely true. And we hear about these way more than we should. And I'm not talking about real hate crimes because you'd like to hear about them never because they wouldn't exist. But the reality is we live in a world where people are awful at times. Not everybody, but a few. We are so many people out there who do certain things to themselves because they're hoping to garner sympathy or how many at least once or twice a year. There's some professor out there of humanities or whatever who 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 does something completely stupid. Look at all the things they painted on the wall. And <laughs> Isn't that your handwriting? Yeah, no. <sighs> Wonder how he's doing. He's holding up very strong. He's committed to clearing his name, and he is 100% confident uh, that he's going to get cleared by our appellate court. <laughs> no. I keep going back to why. Well, I'm not going to speculate why a jury did that, but that sixth count was an event that occurred two weeks after the event. Yeah, so five of the six he was found guilty. One he wasn't. He faces like three years, but he's not going to prison. Not going to, I don't think he's a danger to anybody outside of poor acting and stupidity. Oh, my goodness. How are you going to send him to jail? Right? And not send the dude who lit the tree on fire to jail. Fox lit the tree last night, you know, and there were some hecklers out there. And the, So the guy that they released, he's 49 years old. His dad lives in Hawaii, and his dad's, a, oh, he's cuckoo. <laughs> I can't stop him. I don't know what people want me to do about him. So apparently the news media says, oh, we know that dude. We know him. Because last week at the Maxwell trial, he dropped trow. In front of all of the female reporters. He pulled his pants down and woo, gave it the old woo. Which the last time I'm checked, producer Phil, is that a sex crime? It could definitely Maybe. be harassment. <laughs> I would think so. Hashtag me too. He caused $500,000 in damage. And the cops say, yeah, we know who that guy is. I love his dad's like, yeah, I can't stop him. I don't know what you guys want me to do about it. He's nuts. <laughs> oh, goodness me. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. I do. So they did it. Starbucks has done it. Kind of not really. A few places are trying it. 
Mesa out here. I think a vote is in the next coming weeks. But in Buffalo, New York, they've done it. Employees at a Buffalo Starbucks voting to become the first Starbucks shop in the nation to unionize. Workers also voting at two other Buffalo Starbucks, citing frustration over understaffing and insufficient training. Starbucks at first tried to block the vote, then tried and failed to get all stores to vote yes or no. Just before one store picked the union, Starbucks said its workers would make an average $17 an hour by next summer and that they've invested a billion in improving wages and training for their workers. It's never enough, kids. It's never, ever, 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 ever enough. That's it. It's just never enough. What do you want them to do about staffing? Nobody wants to work there. Or long hours. What do you want? Yesterday, this uh, uh, organic, like, juice shop in California apologized because they they put out a help wanted sign, you know, and the help wanted sign said, if you are the one, you know, like the one, The one who doesn't cry, the one who doesn't whine, the one who doesn't have excuses, the one who has no BS, then we would love to talk to you about being the one. And they pulled the sign down because some people are offended. I'm like, those are the people you go, you know what? You can't work here. You can't. I look at the unions now as they look at Starbucks and places like this that uh, This is the new, like, this is mom and dad for them now. The union is. So fight for 15. Now at 17, it's not enough. Here in Arizona, the store that they're going to, that they're going to vote on, they're offering, uh, it's at 15 now, it'll be 17 to 20, uh, I think at the turn of the year, and they're potentially up to $23 an hour, plus they'll pay for your entire four-year College education, if you go to ASU, and the person's all, it's still not enough. It's never enough. We have earned our seat, and we have proven that we are Starbucks. We are the heart of this company, and we want to see it beat along with its missions and values. Yeah. So what is it exactly you want? Just out of curiosity, what is it? This is Georgetown Uni uh, Union labor historian Lane Windham. People are fed up with the long hours, the low wages. And so the Starbucks workers, they are part of this sort of moment of a worker rights revival that's happening in this country. No, they're not. What do you think is going to happen? Honestly, people will stop either going there if it gets too expensive or Starbucks will start shuttering stores. That's, that's what happens because we're still a consumer based society. We still want some cheap, no matter what anybody says. And the funny thing is the young people are excited about this because, again, it's very much like, hey, let's get some other people in here to fight our fights for us. Oh, Chad, that's not very nice. But they're also, think about this. They're going in and they're they're unionizing. Okay, so you go in and you unionize. But the young people don't stick around long. They don't. They're not staying there for, you know, back in the day, when we had very little laws, and it was absolutely tilted in favor of the major corporations, you were there mostly for your life. That's what you were fighting for. You cared about it. You wanted to be there. You wanted to share in parts of it. That's what you were looking for. This, I find to be, uh, you know, nuts. The kinds of jobs that young people want, they're saying, you know what? Maybe it's a good job, but I think it could be better. And I'm going to exercise my right to have a union and to have a voice on the job. Yeah, but what is it that you want? Because I always hear it's never enough. It's never, never, and never enough. Having a union at their workplace could be really good for the company because it will help them retain these young people. It will help them have a voice on the job. And so I think Starbucks should change its tune and embrace the union and sit down and negotiate a contract. So you go negotiate a contract, right? So you go, you do that. But it's all, remember, too, these are all publicly traded companies. Many, 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 many moons ago, when unions were prevalent in this country, very few, if any, companies were publicly traded. It's much different now. It's much different. There's a lot that goes into 
boardrooms and and people getting you know saying hey you know what we got to cut the fat so let's do it but they have con now they'll blow it out they move they move it overseas and and here's the other thing i know we're also a nation of we like them cheap three two three five three twenty four twenty three at chad benson shows your twitter tweet at us i have no more i'm sad sad to say i ran out my Omaha Steaks, all my tasty nice is gone because I ate it all. OmahaSteaks.com. Enter Chad in the search bar, and you're going to get the opportunity to give the perfect gift package for under $100. You're going to get 24 entrees, bacon wrap fillets, chicken breast sides, desserts. There is no issues with, with in, in you know, like, oh, shortages, shipping delays, none of that stuff. If you're looking for the perfect holiday gift, not only a gift, maybe you want to gift yourself that. Maybe you say, you know what, I'm going to get myself this so I can barbecue. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, I'm going to get this for my mom, my dad, my family loves to barbecue. It is the perfect gift at a price that's amazing with the best, absolutely most incredibly flavored meat you're going to have, and that's Omaha Steaks. It's truly, truly incredible. I ate through everything. The kids ate the caramel uh, apple tartlets like that. The scalloped potatoes is what you get, but then you get all of the other stuff, including throwing in eight free burgers on top of the burgers you have. And the jumbo franks are incredible, but those fillets, whoo, <laughs> oh, Nelly. So how do you get it? It's the perfect gift, and you're going to achieve greatness this holiday by giving a gift like this. You go to omahasteaks.com, enter chat into the search bar, and away you go. You will not be disappointed. Right now, the perfect gift package, under $100, and eight free five-ounce Omaha Steak Burgers. Absolutely delicious. Go to omahasteaks.com, keyword chat, omahasteaks.com, keyword chat. Chad Benson Show. Being antisocial sucks. Hang with Chad's friends on Facebook, The Chad Benson Show. And if you just need some alone time, head on over to Twitter at Chad Benson Show. Either way, we can't wait to meet the real you. Man. I thought last night, we had dinner, the wife and the kids, and then I thought, oh, this game's halftime, it's 29 nothing. I predicted the Vikings were going to win, I thought, that's 29 nothing. I get home, it's 29-7, but Pittsburgh had the ball because they just had an interception, I'm like, oh, what's well, the next play, 29-14, I'm like, oh, it's still a lot of time. What a game. What an absolute crazy game, 36-28. Last play of the game, Big Ben hits the big tight end right across the center in the end zone. Two Minnesota Vikings converge. Boing! Ball pops out. Friar Muth can't hold on to it. It finishes that way. Absolutely fantastic. I picked the Vikings to win. They did everything in their power to lose, but still they managed to win let's get the rest of the picks out of the way i'm 164 for the year based on that last night not bad here we go sets saints jets hate to do this but i'm gonna go with the jets on this one i don't know why but i am falcons panthers see the panthers getting over on the falcons Ugh. it's tough on that one i think i'm gonna go with the falcons right there i just think the falcons are as you know they're not great but man i tell you what the panthers are a hot mess right now Texans, Seahawks. Seahawks get that one. Raiders, Chiefs. Chiefs win that one. Ravens, Browns. I went Browns. Cowboys, Washington. How about them Cowboys? They're losing this weekend. Washington gets a dub at home to pull within a game of the Cowboys. Jags, Titans. Titans win that in a walk away. There will not be win number two for the Lions this weekend in Denver. Broncos get over that. Chargers and the Giants. Chargers got to win. Bengals, 49ers. I'm going with the Bengals. Bills Bucks, arguably the game of the day. Buccaneers at home. I've got to win. Packers, Bears, please. We know who's going to win that game. Packers. Monday night game. Big one. Huge. Cards, Rams. Cards, arguably the best team in the NFL right now. It's hard to debate that. If you're going by numbers, Packers did beat them, but cards are at home, but they've struggled at home. They laid out. 
they absolutely crushed the Rams when they played in L.A., and I think they win again. Cards beat the Rams Monday night. There it is. Jets, Falcons, Seahawks, Chiefs, Broncos, Washington Titans. Oh, my goodness me. Chargers, Bengals, Bucks, Packers. You got it all, kids. Enjoy. It's going to be fun. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. I do. See that Pat McAfee? We made fun of him when he left the NFL, just signed a big contract. He was a punter. Go, I'm going to go to Barstool Sports and be a blogger. People laughed at him. $120 million contract he signed for four years with FanDuel, doubling anything he ever made in just one year. This is the Chad Benson Show.